Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Urshan, and this week we are doing another tag video. And this one is the Werewolf Tag, created by Queenie Todd. And this has been uh, floating around for months now, and I've been wanting to do it for a while. Uh, so I was chatting with Queenie Todd on her channel, so if you haven't subscribed to her, please do. It's a great channel. And she gave me permission to do the tag, so I'm really excited about it because I love werewolf movies. Uh, so let's get to it, shall we? The first question is, what is your favorite werewolf film and why? And I'm happy to say that it's this one right here, The Howling. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so most people say uh, American Werewolf in London. And rightfully so. That's an excellent movie as well. So in my opinion, the two greatest werewolf films were released in 1981. So for The Howling, uh, for me, what puts it above American Werewolf is the characters. There's so many great characters in The Howling. You had, uh, you had Karen, the uh, news anchor slash reporter. You had her uh, news reporter friends like the Belinda Belansky character. Uh, you had some awesome cameos by, like, Dick Miller, Slim Pickens, and uh, John Carradine as the kooky old man. Uh, you had Marsha Quist, who was, like, a real vampish uh, <laughs> nymphomaniac, real sexual deviant type, uh, and she was real seductive. Uh, I love that cat. I love her. And uh, she's got some awesome uh, lines, by the way, in the film. Uh, so many great lines in The Howling as well. And of course you had Eddie Quist, the head werewolf, the, the king baddie, uh, who's a serial killer who also happens to be a werewolf. And of course you had the psychiatrist in charge of the colony, which Karen goes to, uh, to try and get rid of some of the uh, horrific scenes she saw, you know, when she uh, went to visit the serial killer Eddie Quist. Uh, so that really traumatized her. So uh, she meets the psychiatrist who uh, decides that she should go to this colony, which is a nice getaway, and there'll be group therapy meetings. And, uh, <laughs> and I also love that concept, too. Uh, so there's some great humor in The Howling as well, and it's chock full of awesome lines, and not to mention the awesome special effects, which I feel are equal to uh, American Werewolf in London. And uh, just top-notch makeup and uh, special makeup effects by Rob Bottin. Uh And also I think The Howling has the best looking werewolves ever created and ever seen on film. They're like these huge hulking monsters, you know, they're like eight foot tall with huge ass fingernails and uh, they're like frothing at the mouth, you know, <laughs> huge teeth, huge snout, they're, like, they're on their hind legs, and it's just so terrifying, and they're brutal, they look like they're going to rip your face right off, you know. <laughs> so there you have it, The Howling for me is the best werewolf movie ever, in my opinion. So number two is, are werewolves better than vampires? Um, I'm going to say no on that one, because I think... There's a lot of more cool characteristics to being a vampire. Uh, you get the immortality for one thing. You get the power of suggestion, the power of hypnotism, and uh, and the fact that you're you've got super strength, and plus you can bite somebody and suck all that life force, drain the blood from their bodies. You know. It's just a, a lot of awesome powers. You can change into a bat. You can change into a wolf. Uh, so many benefits to being a vampire. I think being a werewolf is more of a curse, as they showed very well in the original Wolfman uh, by Universal Studios. Uh, played by the great Lon Chaney Jr. I really feel like that showed that curse side to being a werewolf. Uh, so, awesome performance by Lon Chaney Jr. That's certainly one of the greatest werewolf movies of all time. So yeah, I think uh, being a vampire would be better. There are some downsides, of course, as you know, sunlight can kill them. You know, they do have a lot of weaknesses, but I just think overall it would be better to be a vampire. Uh, so number three is name the most brutal scene you've seen in a werewolf film. 
Uh, so I'm going to go with Dog Soldiers, uh, which has a lot of brutal scenes, and it's an awesome werewolf movie, by the way. Um, so yeah, when are we going to come out with some new werewolf movies? We need a great werewolf movie now, folks. You know, there hasn't been one since Dog Soldiers, which was years ago. Uh, so, the most brutal scene in Dog Soldiers, I feel, is when the werewolf bites that soldier's neck and uh, yanks his head right off and throws it at this dude's uh, army jeep. <laughs> and it just sits there on the hood, you know. Uh, it's brutal, it's vicious, uh, bloody, and awesome. Uh, so, that's a great movie, Dog Soldiers. Uh, number four is, what is the best werewolf transformation scene? I had a really hard time with this because uh, I feel like there's two excellent ones. And obviously, American Werewolf in London uh, is just amazing. So, amazing effects and makeup on American Werewolf in London during that transformation scene. Uh, and I feel as well, Howling also had an absolutely awesome werewolf transformation of the Eddie Quist character when he goes, I'm going to show you a piece of my mind. And he takes out a bullet from his head. And uh, the difference I feel in the two is in the Howling, Eddie Quist is a lot more evil. I think he loves being a werewolf. And you see it in his face. You see the evil look, the evil glaze. And he just wants to show this girl what it's like to be a werewolf and how much damage he can do and the terror he can instill in her uh, and you really see that and I think the difference with uh, American Werewolf in London uh, I feel the performance of the actor really adds a lot to it because you can hear the pain in his voice the pain in his face and the anguish and that and that's what I feel really brings American Werewolf uh, and makes it the best werewolf transformation scene, as well as the incredible <laughs> effects that just goes without saying. Uh, it's amazing when you see his hands grow into paws, and then you see him go on all fours, you know, on the floor, and you see the hair come out of him, you know, you see the snout come out slowly, you see the teeth come out slowly. It's amazing. So, yeah, I have to give the slight edge by a hair, by a werewolf hair, to American Werewolf in London as the best werewolf transformation scene. Also want to give a shout out to Stephen King's Silver Bullet, which is an, also an excellent werewolf film. I know Lisa loves, uh, she loves this film, and so does Nick the Last Shoegazer. A lot of people love this movie, and it's a great one. So gotta give a shout out to that one. Uh, so next up, number five is, what is the silliest, worst werewolf film you've ever seen? Uh, so I gotta give that to Teen Wolf, starring Michael J. Fox from the 80s. Uh, such a cheesy movie where this... Teenage Werewolf, yeah, it was kind of a remake of the original I Was a Teenage Werewolf starring Michael Landon. Um, but it was just really corny, you know, the werewolf joins a, a basketball team and he, and he starts scoring more points than anybody. It's just so corny. Uh, not to get wrong, don't get me wrong, I like Michael J. Fox. He's been in a lot of good movies, obviously, Back to the Future. Um, but just this just wasn't one of my favorites, you know. Uh, so number six, what was your first werewolf film? And uh, I got to break that down to two because one of them wasn't actually a werewolf movie, but it did have a werewolf in it, and that is Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, which is what I feel the greatest horror comedy ever made. Uh, and that starred... Lon Chaney Jr. reprising his role as the Wolfman. Legendary movie, by the way, uh, which was also from Universal Studios, and it gathered all the Universal monsters together. You had Frankenstein's monster, you had the original Dracula played by Bela Lugosi, and you had Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. So that was technically my first, but it's not a completely a werewolf movie, but my first complete werewolf movie that I ever saw was The Howling. So, 
uh, I saved the best for first. <laughs> the Howling was my first full-blown werewolf movie. Uh, so number seven, what is your favorite werewolf legend? And uh, I'm going to go with the classic fairy tale, Little Red Riding Hood. Such a classic story, and I love it. I loved when my parents would read me that little book, you know, and uh, looking at the, the awesome drawings. and uh, <laughs> It was so, so intriguing to me, that story. I love it. Uh, so yeah, Little Red Riding Hood, that's my favorite. Uh, so, now it's my turn to tag some people, and it took me a little research uh, to find out who hasn't done this one yet. But I did find a few people. Horror Metal. That's right, Hellhound. I'm calling you out. Uh, so, Bronco Juggalo Talks Movies. Uh, Dave Maggot. Rusting Willpower. And another guy who's just returned from a little bit of a sabbatical, and that is Movie Massacre. So guys, answer the call and do the werewolf tag. Be sure to give Queenie Todd the credit. And uh, thank you guys for joining me, Sean Patrick Gershon in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared.